Hello, welcome to Eye on Africa here on France 24. I'm Rochelle Harrison Pless. Good to have you with us coming up. A final farewell to Kofi Annan. World leaders, diplomats and royalty are among the mourners paying tribute to the former UN chief and global statesman at his funeral in Ghana. France 24 speaks to Ugandan opposition lawmaker Bobby Wine, who's seeking medical treatment in the US. He says he was the victim of brutal torture by Ugandan security forces. And a rare admission from France. President Emmanuel Macron says the country was responsible for the torture and killing of a communist pro-independence activist in Algeria over 60 years ago. First up, a man of integrity and dedication, one of the truly iconic figures of modern times. Just a couple of the tributes paid to former UN chief and Nobel Peace Laureate Kofi Annan, with world leaders, diplomats and royalty gathering in the Ghanaian capital to bid a final farewell as he was laid to rest. For three days, thousands of mourners filed past his coffin, which lay in state in Accra. For more, our correspondent Nathan Kuo reports from Ghana. The burial service of the former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan was held earlier today at the Accra International Conference Centre. He died in Switzerland at age 80 after a short illness and earlier this week his body was flown in as a build-up to today's ceremony. The ceremony was attended by Ghanaian President Nana Adodankwe Kufadu, Antonio Guterres, who is the current UN Secretary General, and other leading personalities, including the President of Liberia, Cote d'Ivoire, and Namibia. There was a moving moment of opera singing from Barbara Hendricks as she graced the occasion, plus other choirs and singers who had been brought in to liven up the atmosphere. There were moving tributes also from Antonio Guterres, the President of Ghana, and the late Mr. Anand's family and close relations. After that, his body was sent to the Burma Camp military ceremony for a short burial service, which was graced by a 17-gun salute given in honor of the man. Moments later, his casket was lowered into the grave as it was draped by the colors of the Ghanaian flag. Next, Ugandan pop star turned opposition lawmaker Bobby Wine remains in the U.S. for medical treatment. He fled there two weeks ago, alleging that he was brutally beaten and tortured by Ugandan security forces while in custody, an accusation that Kampala staunchly denies. The 36-year-old has been an outspoken critic of longtime leader Yoweri Museveni. He spoke to France 24's Philip Crowther about his detention in Uganda and his plans for the future. Well, I was tortured. I mean, despicable ways. I was uh, beaten, um, tied up, handcuffed, uh, both hands and legs, and I was uh, thrown in a military uh, confinement for more than 10 days. Yeah. So, what's your plan now? Is a return, an immediate return to Uganda on the cards? I'm actually planning to go back home, and uh, if the doctors are to stand by what they advise. I think I'll be returning to Uganda next week. And yes, I will continue challenging authoritarianism and I will continue galvanizing Ugandans, especially young people, to continuously demand for the freedom and dignity that they must achieve. So once you do return to Uganda, will you be in full opposition to the Ugandan president Museveni? What exactly are you going to do to oppose him? The opposition in Uganda has always been divided and that has been the weakness and indeed it's one of the reasons that have delayed the change that Uganda desperately needs. So my intention is to try as much as possible to unite the opposition to make sure we all look at the aspirations and desires that we have as a country and particularly as oppressed people. Another question I want to ask you is, you're obviously not only here, you're mainly here for, for medical reasons, of course, but you have met um, some members of the State Department from, from what I hear. Uh, you're meeting all sorts of people here in Washington. What are you asking from the U.S. government when it comes to their involvement in Uganda? Uh, primarily, I came here for specialized treatment, but I'm also, I must also note that I was not the only person that was brutally uh, arrested or tortured. I'm only humbled that uh, I have the ability and resources to bring me to America. And secondly, um, my brutalization as a person seemed to, to attract uh, so much attention from across the world. 
And because it's not just me, but very many people that were brutalized, many of them were even more brutalized than me. So I intend to use this opportunity to raise the voice of those people that were oppressed, of those people that have been uh, tortured, that uh, are continuously tortured, and for those that uh, probably will be tortured in the near future, to make sure what happened to me and my colleagues does not happen to anybody else in Uganda. Bobby Wine speaking to France 24's Philip Crowther there. A rare but landmark omission admission rather France has acknowledged responsibility for the torture and killing of a communist activist in Algeria six decades ago. 25-year-old Maurice Audin was a mathematician at the University of Algiers when he was arrested in 1957 by the French military during Algeria's struggle for independence. For more than 60 years, uncertainty and doubt had clouded the circumstances of his death. Luc Schrego explains. Maurice Audin. 25, father of three, mathematician, communist, and committed to Algerian independence. His beliefs would make him a symbol of a system of torture by the French state during that struggle. We went to bed. The children were all asleep, and uh, during the night, there was a knock on the door. They'd come for my husband. They took him away, and then... We never saw him again. Paratroops arrested Audin and took him to the LBR detention centre on June the 11th, 1957, where he was interrogated and allegedly tortured. Only a letter from another communist activist arrested a day later shed any light on Audin's treatment. I saw Maurice. He was haggard, his face pale. He murmured to me, it's hard, Henry. Nearly three weeks later, Maurice's wife, Josette, was called in by soldiers. They said they had a piece of good news to share with me. And that was that my husband had escaped and they had nothing more to say to me. I walked out of there in tears, saying they'd killed him. Theories over Audin's fate swirled until 2014, when then-President François Hollande officially declared that he died in detention following an official visit to Algeria. Emmanuel Macron would go even further pushed by two MPs, one a communist, another his own, who've long held an interest in the matter. Maurice Audin was one of those who were the victims of a system. It's a moment where we can look at history head on, not to apportion blame without distinction, but invite people to talk and dress wounds. Macron called Josette Audin after his election last year, on the 60th anniversary of her husband's disappearance. He promised he'd do all he could, finally, to bring her the answers she'd been seeking for so long. And finally, celebrating black women through positive artistic representations. French Congolese illustrator Nicole Kobi is crisscrossing the globe with her art series A Parisian Instant, weaving her black girl magic through images that touch on themes such as sisterhood and black love. Well, Nicole Kobi joins me on set. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much for being here. You've said it's revolutionary to draw black women. Why? I don't. I didn't say that. People say that actually. If just seeing black women in in her daily life, this become a rare, um, of a rare revolution. Revolution. But actually, for me, it's a regular thing because I always done that. Okay. Well, you started out posting your illustrations to Instagram, I believe, yeah. uh, because you were frustrated by the lack of uh, of representation of black women. Do you feel things have changed since you started out? That there is perhaps more and more diversity now, or do we still have a long way to go? The, the thing you really change is now you can see more black artists drawing black women also. This is uh, the, the big change and also the way people are, uh, used to see, see black women. Now people see them just like regular women because we are regular women. Okay, well, you grew up in Normandy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you were born in Kinshasa. Mm -hmm. uh, we were speaking about that off air. Uh, but it wasn't until you came to Paris that you really felt racism and perhaps this feeling of exclusion, uh, exclusion rather, was amplified. Uh, you've said that black people in Paris are not ready to be black. That's, that was a quote attributed to you in an interview. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? I'm, I'm intrigued. Okay, the thing is, we are not totally ready to talk about uh, ourselves, to do things for, by, uh, for us, for people who look like us and for, for us. I feel like we always 
waiting for the approbation of the rest of the, 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 the French community. And like doing art, black women, drawing black women, I receive more criticize from black people in Paris more than white people. So I feel like... Really, you received more criticism from bad, the black community. Exactly. So I feel yeah. like they are not ready to see themselves even in Paris. Like, we don't need to, to, to show ourselves. We, uh, we, we just need to be there, but not to make much, so many noise. We, we don't need to, to represent ourselves. All these things, it's like, we are so afraid about the communitarism in, in, in France. So I feel like people are not ready to see themselves. Where do you think that comes from? From, you know, this is a French community, how it, it, it is. We don't like the communitarism in, 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 in France. So black people, they, they understand that and they really take that for, for, for them. Like, OK, we don't want to be this person who disturbs the community. We don't love the communitarism. But the communitarism in France, is a, you can see it in the other community. You can see it in the white community, in the Chinese community, in the, uh, the other community. But the black community, they, they, they don't, they're not ready for that. They're not ready. J just like in the US or in the UK, you can do something <coughs> and say, OK, I'm a black entrepreneur and I draw black people and it's OK. But in France, it's not OK. Because the, 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 the world communitarist, make of, they are afraid about it. They are really afraid about it. And I'm not saying I'm communitarist. I'm just do, try, trying to do something for my people just because I, I, I didn't see it yet in France. Nobody was doing that. And I, I'm just, the thing is, I'm just saying we have to do things by our own just because we don't have to waiting for other people to do things for us. Right. If you don't see it there, you just need to sort of do it yourself we, you, yeah. instead of waiting for someone else to, to do it. We for have you. to yeah. stop to complaining about everything in France, actually, as black people, just like, oh, we never see us enough on TV. We, not, we don't see us enough uh, on, on, the, social, on the, the media, the journal, the, the magazines, all these things. But OK, that you, you, we are right. Of course, we are, we are not representing enough in France, but we have to do it by ourselves. It's, it's what I've done, and I feel like everybody has to do it, and we have to stop to complaining about all these things uh, who happen in France. We just have to do it. If we do the right thing, we don't have to be afraid about it. Now, your work has been embraced abroad, mm -hmm. uh, but I read an interview where you said Francophone Africa has been slow to respond. Why? I think it's the, the same reason, mm -hmm. just like the... the, uh, the Anglo-Saxon from uh, Africa, they are more ready to to do things for black people and to, to be, they're okay with that. But the Francophone, they are more slow. You can see it in the economics. They are more slow to, to, to understand things maybe, I don't know. <laughs> and despite your success, are you still experiencing any pushback or challenges today? Of course. Of course, I'm, I'm still a young entrepreneur. I'm still a, a startup. So it's, it's always more difficult, like, with my tour, by example, I don't have any sponsor. I have to do everything by my own. I have to, to pay everything by my own. So it's, it's yes, of course, I've, I, I always have challenge, of course. Okay, well, Nicole Kobi, thank you so much for being here and giving thank us you your time. Uh, to those of you watching at home, uh, you can catch Nicole on her Parisian instant tour, which uh, actually lands in the French capital this weekend. For more details, head to uh, Nicole's website, nicolecobie.com. Well, stay with us here on France 24. Lots more news coming up. I'll be back in around 45 minutes with more Eye on Africa. We've come to northeastern Nigeria, the birthplace of Boko Haram. The Nigerian army and vigilante fighters have managed to push the jihadist group back in recent years, but it still has terror cells throughout this region and carries out frequent suicide attacks. Meanwhile, millions of people have fled their homes and are still packed in camps, too afraid to return home. Reporters Plus, coming soon on France 24.